setting up the viral environment to work with your own handcrafted configurations is quick and easy to do. And in this tutorial, we're going to show you how you can do that. Here, I've already designed my environment. Very simple environment with a switch in the middle and three routers. I'm then going to be setting up VLANs between the XRV and the IOSV instances. I now want to set up just the basic infrastructure. So from my Auto Netkit menu, I'm then selecting to disable IP addressing. And I also want to turn off routing protocols. As you can see, that's now set to false. At this point, I'm now going to generate the basic configuration. So there it goes. And if we take a look at what's actually being created, we can see that the configuration has been built for this particular node. And there's the management interface being created and our Ethernet interface, but with no IP address. So if we take a look at this node, again, management interface is created and the data interface, but with no IP address. So now I have my blank template. I'm ready to start up my topology, which I can then manually configure. My simulation is now up, and I've got the console port on the XRV node open. So I'm logging in, and we just take a look at the IP addressing. So we do see an IP address. Now that's our management interface, which has been enabled. So I actually have SSH access directly into the node. So I can log in and operate using SSH rather than via the console port if I wish. So now I'm going to configure my interfaces. So I'm setting up for VLANs, turning on dot one q VLAN 10, setting my IP address, and submit mask. Setting up another sub-interface, this time VLAN 20. IP address and mask. And then we want to go in and configure our routing protocol. So I'm going to set up for OSPF. So this is a slightly different syntax than uh, in iOS. So we're enabling it on the one interface and on the other interface, setting the cost. And then we're going to commit. So now I want to review my addressing. So we're looking there. We can see my sub interfaces and the IP addresses are set. OK, so now we're going to go to iOS v1 and manually configure this node. So into configuration mode and setting on the main interface the IP address. OK, we're not going to use sub interfaces here. Enabling OSPF and setting up the routing protocol and putting the interface into area zero. OK, so now to iOS v2. Again, logging in. And we're going to manually configure this device as well. Setting the IP address. OSPF cost. And the routing protocol. And again, putting the network into area zero. So connectivity isn't quite complete yet. And if we try and ping, we'll see that the ping fails because we haven't set up our switch. So we're going to log in. And we're able to go in directly because we've set up the infrastructure. And the username and password has been created automatically for us. And now I'm going to set up this particular interface from the switch down to iOS v1, putting that interface into VLAN 10. So we're setting up for switch port mode access with the VLAN 10. Similarly, putting this port into switch port mode access for VLAN 20. So now we're going to configure the port from the switch up to the router, the XR router, as a trunk. So this is a slightly different configuration. So turning off access mode. and enabling trunking mode. And 
There we go. If we now look at the configuration, we can see the various ports. The first port being reserved for out of band management. And then we can see the other ports set for VLAN 10, VLAN 20, and the trunking port, respectively. So here we can see the VLANs that are in operation, and also the trunk interface carrying the VLANs. I've now switched to iOS v2 and I'm pinging, and there we go, we now have connectivity through the switch up to the XRV router. Now, if we look at the OSPF neighbors, we can see they're up. And if we take a look at the routing table, we don't actually see any additional routes through because none are being advertised. These are all directly connected. So let's just prove that we've got connectivity working. So I'm going to go back into the IOSV router and we're going to add loopback interfaces and add those into the OSPF routing protocol just to prove that is actually working. So there we go, adding that into the area. Go to iOS v2, we're going to do the same. We're going to add a loopback interface. Add that into OSPF. And then let's take a look back up on the XRV router and see whether we're getting those new routes through. So there they are. So now I want to save my changes. So we're using the extract configuration. It's running. And we should get these messages that confirm that we got the configuration out from each one of those nodes. So again, this is part of the infrastructure that's been set up for us, and there we see the confirmation messages that the configurations were correctly extracted. So I can now review those configurations, and we can see that those entries that I created are now present on each one of those routers. Okay, so now I want to shut down my simulation and start it up again. And I want to see if my configuration is being applied when I restart. So simulation down, and let's start it up again. So I've restarted the simulation. And because I've got my management IPs in place, I've got SSH access directly in. And we can see that there is a new management IP address, so automatically assigned. And those are, there are those IP addresses from my configuration that I applied, and we've got ping connectivity through. So hopefully you're seeing that here we have a mixture of configuration created by Auto NetKit for all the management infrastructure merged with my configurations so that I then have full management infrastructure access into the simulation every time I start up without the need to go back, press Auto NetKit, and start from scratch each time.